Welcome back. So today we'll be starting the Cataclysm Guides with the Bastion of Twilight. First up is Halfus. Now in Heroic, the five dragons will be active and Halfus and his Moto Behemoth will have all their abilities. You want to pull with Snake Trap and without misdirection to reduce the time the boss spends hitting your pet since he has increased damage on pet and he will also put a stacking debuff that will reduce healing taken. Therefore you do not want your pet to tank him before you have freed the three dragons which are the Time Warden to avoid the Proto Behemoth killing you very quickly with his fireballs, the Slate Dragon that will sometimes paralyze Alphus for 12 seconds giving you time to breathe and then finally the Never Scion that will reduce the damage Alphus does to your pet. Now the beginning of the fight is the most difficult part since you will have Alphus and three dragons up so it's the moment for you to pop Bloodlust and the Quintuple Last Stand while trying to kill the dragons one after the other. Now, when Halfus is paralyzed, you can try to call back your pet so that Halfus will lose time getting to him. However, you can also dismiss your pet and summon a new one, which is actually probably the best idea, since it will reset the malevolent strike stacks and you won't have to use a deterrence to raise your pet without dying yourself. This isn't very easy to execute with three dragons. However, once you've managed to kill all the drakes and you're only left with the boss, he will take plus 300% damage, which will actually bring him to something like 12,500,000 proportional health. And therefore he should die pretty quickly and when he's paralyzed you can always switch your pet or raise it if he's dead and once he reaches 50 percent he will even start doing some aoe's but during that time he won't melee your pet so once you've managed to kill the three drakes the fight is basically won second up is valiona and Teralion. it may not look like it but it's actually a dps race since the damage you take will ramp up as the fight progresses and the longer you fight, the more damaging a mistake will be until it finally can one-shot you. However, the start of the fight is a battle for survival. You want to be running around to avoid Terralion's bolts, use your spirit beast spirit mans to heal you up whenever it's possible and to use your two deterrences on the two blackouts Valiona will cast. Also, during that time, Alt will start spawning in the Twilight Realm, and they will start throwing bolts at you. There is nothing you can do except avoid all the damage that you can. You also want to misdirect Terralion a little bit on your pet, to avoid him trying to melee you during phase 2 because you will probably be at pretty low health at that moment and a single hit will be enough to kill you. When the first dazzling destruction comes in, make sure to get hit by it but to avoid all the others or they will one shot you and you'll be taken to the twilight realm. There you will have to make sure that Terralion has aggro on your pet and not on you and you will have to kill quickly all the twilight sentries. They will continue to spawn throughout the fight. However, you, if you use track dragonkin, you will be able to see on your minimap where they are and how many of them they are. You will spend the rest of the fight in the twilight realm. Now, only Terralion's abilities when he's grounded will affect you. So simply move out of the purple zones 
and if you have a debuff, then it's pretty neat since it's actually a damage and a healing increase. However, the Twilight Zone will itself try to kill you. First, it will put a stacking debuff on you that will deal more and more damage and that will also increase the damage you take from the mines. The mines are simply the little purple orbs that must be avoided or they will explode for a lot of damage, especially if you are high stacks. Just like uh, the Ahu encounter in the Brawler's Guild. During the transition to phase 1, Valiona will take 3 deep breaths. However, you can easily avoid them by using Track Dragon Kill and looking at her position on the minimap since she will breathe in a straight line. Make sure to avoid her breath since it does 90k damage per second. And that's all. Simply avoid the AoEs on the ground, avoid the mines, kill the Dragon Kings when they spawn. And you also have an achievement for killing 6 Twilight Fiends during the fight, which are the little adds that spawn, but this can also be done on normal. Third verse is the Ascendant Council. We'll be covering this on normal. During the first fight, you will face Feliudus and Ignatius. The phase will end when one of them reaches 25%. However, you want both to reach 25% at about the same time. First, don't stand too near Feliudus or you will take extra damage. And also, if you get a waterlogged debuff, run inside the flames to remove it. Also, do not use your interrupt on one of Feludius's Hydro Lancers because Ignatius will do a shield and start channeling a spell which must be interrupted once the shield is destroyed. Finally, you will have a debuff put on you that will deal increasing damage. Uh, either you outgear this fight and use a spirit beast or you will need to bring multiple spirit beasts and rotate through them. Once Iron and Terrastra arrive, you want to take one of the tornadoes as soon as you can to avoid the first quake. However, after that, the damage you take will be really low. So once the debuff is gone, you won't really have to worry about survival. The only thing you need to worry about is about bringing both to 25% at more or less the same time. Phase 3 is pretty straightforward. You have to heal him before he kills you. There will be ice patches beneath his feet. If you want to get the achievement, don't move him out of it. There will also be red lava seas that you need to avoid. And there's of course a chain lightning that will deal more and more damage until he dies. Just blow all your CDs and this phase shouldn't pose any problems if you have enough gear. Fourth boss up is Shogal. Now, first thing first, you need to get at least one melee hit every minute to be considered a tank or he will mind control you and mind control your pet and despawn. So simply keep an eye, for example, on the Enrage timer to know when is the last time you got hit He will him. also call Corrupted Adherence to him. Now, when these die, they leave a pool on the ground, so you want to kill them all on the same spot. And also, they have two spells, Depravity, that must be interrupted or it will give you Corrupted Blood, and an... AOE under your feet that will also give you corrupted blood if you don't move out of it quickly. Finally, after you kill the Adherent, he will make little adds spawn from all the pools in the room, which is why you want them to be stacked up. Uh, simply AOE them and they have nearly no health, but make sure never to take a mini hit from them or it will give you corrupted blood. Uh, to put it short, the more corrupted blood you have, the worse it is. And if you get to 25 corrupted 
blood, he will put a debuff on you that will quickly take you to 100% and once you reach 100% you can no longer heal yourself and you will die really quickly. He will also call elementals during the fight, fire and shadow. When he absorbs a fire elemental, he gains extra melee damage proportionally to the elemental's health. And it's the same thing for the shadow elemental, however, it's AoE damage. Normally you shouldn't need to damage the elementals, however you do not want to take a melee hit from Shogal while he has the fire elemental buff, and if you're low on health you might want to damage the shadow elementals to avoid the AoE damage being too high. At 25% health, phase 2 will start. Now you will quickly start gaining corrupted blood until you reach 100 and become unhealable. He will also make eyes spawn. These have an ability called Debilitating Beam that reduces the healing and damage you do by 75%. And he also spawns claw tentacles that will deal a lot of damage on your pet. So this is really a burst phase. What can also be good to know is that once you've reached 100 corruption, become a faceless one and become unhealable, you will also have an 100% damage increase. So if you want to keep CDs for that moment, you can. But the best moment to use CDs is when you have no eyes up because they are really disruptive to DPS. And when he reaches low enough health, he will go to the middle of the room and die, and you will finally be able to face Sinestra. And finally, there is Sinestra that will be the real challenge of this instance. You want to pull the boss with your pet, but by making sure that you keep Agro on the boss, because he has a spell called Rack that will kill you if she casts it on you. However, if you tank her, you are considered a tank. So you simply need to stay in melee range while having the most aggro until the well spawns. And once the well spawns, you have to wait until they cast a debuff on you called Twilight Spit, disengage, and miserate them on your pet. Now, once they are dead, they will leave a zone, void zone under their feet that will raise all whelps that die in it. So you want to kill them a second time, but on the other side of the room. And that time they will stay dead. Phase 2 will start when she reaches 30% and you want that to happen as fast as possible after she spawns the second whelp wave, and especially before she spawns the third. Then you want to leave your pet on the boss and kill without misdirecting four of the five whelps that are attacking you, uh, unless you still have the thunderhawk that sometimes spawn because he will kill one of the whelps, so in that case you have to keep two alive, like I did during my video. Also make sure to hide behind Kaelion's fire barrier as she ends her big AoE. Then you will have to damage her to keep her mana low. As long as she is under a million mana, then you won't have to worry about doing any more damage on the boss. Then the more delicate part of the fight will start. She will remove the damage reduction on the eggs at each side of the room. So you want your pet to destroy while helping him a bit with a few arcane shots the first egg while you run to the second egg and kill it before the immunity comes back. If you run near enough the second egg, then the drake attacking you should go back to his spawn point. After that, he may aggro your pet, he may not, but he has really low health, so he really won't interfere 
during the fight unless he's attacking you, in which case he will end up killing you. Once both eggs are down, phase 3 will spawn. You really must put your pet in middle range of Sinestra and make him attack her or she will one-shot you. And there will be an other ad as Spite Caller that will spawn. He has only one ability, but it will one-shot both you and your pet. When he starts casting it, the only way to interrupt him is to use scatter shot and then to kill him before he casts it a second time. Also, if you do not still have the Twilight Speed debuff from the whelps, she will cast Rack on you and it will kill you. Which is why you kept a whelp alive during all the phase. However, once the buff is refreshed, you can misdirect whelps a second time on your pet while making sure that they die somewhere where, where there are already Twilight Paddles, then bring your pet some place where there aren't Twilight Paddles and kill the whelps once again. However, since the Paddles grow in size, soon there will simply be no way to kill the whelps without them raising, so you will want to keep them as much as possible on you However, when you simply can't take them anymore, you will have to send them on your pet, which will start taking more and more damage. And therefore, this is a DPS race. You must try to tank the whelp as much as possible and kill the boss before the whelps kill your pet. So that's it for the version of Twilight. I hope you have found this guide useful. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comments.